Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel. I am Denmark Aranas, a postgraduate medical intern. I basically provide informative videos to medical students. And also, I would like to give aspiring Filipino physicians an idea of what a med student usually tackle in med school. If you find these videos helpful, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to be updated for my new videos that I'll be posting every week. For today, I'll be discussing the clinical pathologic correlation making. Okay, as a graduate of biology, I really enjoyed making a CPC because I love the investigative nature of doing so. My thirst for knowledge gets to be quenched by each time I was able to finish a CPC for a disease. And also, I get to be amazed of how really great of an architect our God is for creating us so magnificently. And my only objective by the end of this lecture is for you to find it easy and enjoy creating a CPC as you will be doing this more and more in your years of med school. Okay? For the topic outline, first I'll be defining what a clinical pathologic correlation is or CPC. And then I will teach you how to formulate a CPC and then lastly on how to properly present it. Okay, let's start. So what is a CPC? From the name itself, we may derive its meaning. Okay, clinical means dealing with a patient case. Okay, and then pathologic, this is the study of the disease process. And correlation is the attempt to establish a relation. Okay, so a clinical pathologic correlation is the explanation of the clinical presentation in a patient case through establishing a relation with its disease process. Okay, today, You'll be learning the step-by-step -step guide in formulating a good CPC. So here are the steps. And the first thing that you have to do is to dissect and analyze the case. And from there, you would be able to arrive at the correct diagnosis. And once you have the correct diagnosis of the case, you would then be able to matter load about the disease itself. And after reading a lot, we could then write the synthesized explanation for the correlated clinical presentation and the disease process. Okay, let's go to the first step, which is to dissect and analyze the case. For this, we would be using a model case, which is a patient who came from the outpatient department with a chief complaint of cough and difficulty of breathing. In dissecting a case, we underline in red the important points to consider and then analyze it, okay? So we start with the chief complaint. From there, we could already infer that the most likely cause of concern of the patient is respiratory involvement from the cough and difficulty of breathing. And out of all the body systems, it is the respiratory system that we are considering the most. Next is the age. A 57-year-old man indicates that our patient is an elderly man, okay? And then the productive cough for two weeks indicate that the duration is acute. And at the onset, there were no associated fever and other symptoms, okay? And then it is important to note that the productive cough persisted and from Having no other associated symptoms, it progressed to having easy fatigability, chest pain, nausea, and weakness. And then the absence of cardiac symptoms is also very important because we can infer that uh, the cardiac pathologies are least likely to be considered in our case. Okay. And for the other parts of the history, such as the past medical, surgical, family history, and social history, all are unremarkable. So we can infer that we have an uncomplicated case because the patient has no other comorbidities and no other risk factors that can predispose or precipitate his condition. As for the PE, 
all are unremarkable except for the chest and lungs findings highlighted in red box. So uh, we could infer that the point of infection of our patient is in the lungs, as we could see in this uh, highlighted uh, portion that there is an increased tactoid frenitus over the left lower lobe and bronchial breath sounds and crackles over the left lung base. Okay. And so from dissecting the case of this patient, we could say that uh, he is a stable patient. Okay. And we could now arrive at the correct diagnosis from what we did. By combining the history and physical exam, we could deduce that this patient has an infection of the lungs and it classically presents as community acquired pneumonia or CAP. And the two weeks productive cough and the findings in the lungs, uh, namely the presence of crackles over the left lung base, are all shouting that this is the case of pneumonia. History and PE are sufficient enough as the basis to diagnose this as a case of CAP. And then we would only use laboratory examination as a confirmatory of our diagnosis and to risk satisfy the patient. And the laboratory exam that we would use would be chest x-ray. And the chest x-ray findings for this patient is that um, there are infiltrates over the left lower lung base. However, there were no other pathologies like pleural effusion. So this is a cap low risk. The basis for my diagnosis of this case is the Philippine Clinical Practice Guidelines for Community Acquired Pneumonia, entitled Diagnosis, Empiric Management, and Prevention of Community Acquired Pneumonia in Immunocompetent Adults. This is a 2016 update. Okay, here you see the flow chart from the CPG. And for the risk stratification of the patient, these Eight parameters are not present, thus the patient is considered a low risk cap and it could be managed as an outpatient. Okay, And then after knowing the correct diagnosis, the next thing that uh, you should do is to read, read, and read. Okay, And uh, you should be using these high yield references. And the uh, first thing that you should read would be our med school transcribed notes, okay? These are very good sources because our professors have taught us during the lectures the must know about the disease, okay? And then after consulting our transcribed notes or transcripts, I highly recommend the 28th edition Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine as your next reference okay because it is in here that you would be able to get the uh, comprehensive discussion of the disease process and if there would be any missing information and uh, you would like to clarify anything you could consult the internet okay and i've listed here and highlighted these three websites as they are very reliable and these are what i commonly use the UpToDate, WebMD, and Medscape, okay? And of course, while reading, you should keep in mind the clinical presentation of the patient. And then while reading, you should have with you a tabulated patient signs and symptoms and important points in the case in one column. And on the other side, there you would compile the research points you found in the high yield references. Okay, so while reading, you also write, write, and write. Here you see an example of the proper way of writing the research for CPC. In the first column, you consider the salient points in our case. Okay, these are just some. Okay, the risk factors, the factor, absence of fever, and productive cough. In the second column, 
You see there the research data I compiled that I deemed useful in correlating the disease process with the manifestations in our patient. Okay? And then after tabulating, we then convert it to paragraph form, synthesizing the gathered data into a one cohesive explanation of the disease process correlated with the clinical presentation in the case. So here, let's read. An important risk factor present in our patient is his age. Being an elderly predisposes one for having pneumonia because they have poor cough and gag reflex. Also, they have diminished antibody and toll-like receptor responses. And both impair the host defenses, predisposing them to aspiration of a bacteria, gaining access in the alveoli, which would then trigger the inflammatory responses. This now can easily be converted into a visual representation of the CPC as seen below. Okay. Let's now go to the last part of the discussion. Here, I would teach you how to properly present a CPC. Here are the important points that I would want uh, all of you to keep in mind in creating your CPC visual representation. First is, please use keywords or key phrases only. Uh, these are enough to make your audience understand what you are trying to convey. No need to put the whole explanation you have in your paragraph. And then next, use arrows, okay, to indicate poor or high, increased or decreased. And also other symbols that you deem uh, fit could, can also be used, like a check or a cross mark to indicate the presence or absence of something. And then as for the direction of the CPC flow, please stick to one only, okay? If you want it going to the left, uh, to right, uh, please stick to that direction. But for me, I prefer it to be going down to really get the feel and impression that the disease process is happening in cascading events, okay? And then uh, you discuss the CPC from left to right because that would facilitate your audience in easily following you during your discussion. And then in the PowerPoint slide, make sure that you divide the visual representation of your CPT by sections, okay? As you can see here, I highlighted in uh, different boxes the different sections that I would place in a slide. The blue box would be one slide for risk factor, and then the other a uh, yellow box would be for the next slide, and for the last slide would be this, the green box. Okay, and then lastly, uh, second to the last would be color coding. Uh, we only uh, used color coding for uh, being organized, okay? One color for the clinical presentation and another color for the disease mechanisms. Okay, and then lastly, the animations. Only use simple styles and it should be in coordination with your discussion. Okay, doing all of this would really ensure you of a great uh, presentation of a CPC. Okay, and if you have um, these uh, factors present, uh, it would ensure great clarity and it would leave a good impression to your professors that you have prepared well for the report. Okay, well, that's it. I really hope I was able to help you in a small way to enjoy doing CPCs. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to PM me. And as for the detailed and actual explanation of the pneumonia CPC I presented here, just visit my YouTube channel and there I have a playlist solely for CPCs. And if you would want a copy for the PowerPoint of any CPCs I presented there, just PM me and tell me the case uh, that you want to check for you to be able to correct the diagnosis. And I would uh, gladly give you a copy. And to end my presentation, let me leave you with a quote. Okay. Our hearts are wherever our memories are and our trust 
is wherever our love is, and our home is wherever our family is. Thank you for listening and have a good day.